Hey everybody, what's it, Fox Gaming here. So today I wanted to show you all why I think Negotiator's Dilemma is still an absolute top tier pick in PvP and to be fair, in PvE as well. I will be releasing a PvE video in the near future. Um, so Negotiator's Dilemma is a high damage set that allows you to essentially spread damage at the same time across multiple targets and is a really effective way of closing kills. You know, if you down somebody and they get around a corner, you can easily close the kill without actually getting that close to them. So the way that it works is the 2 and 3 piece give us a lot of critical, ha critical hit chance and critical hit damage which is fantastic because this build is very much focused around having high um, damage and chance. The 4 piece is where it really shines though and what we're going to be taking advantage of today. Hostile negotiations, critical hits mark enemies for 20 seconds up to 3 marks total. When they are marked you can see because there's a red symbol above their head and they can see that in their buff bar uh, underneath their ammo count. When you critically hit a marked enemy, all other marked enemies take 60% of the damage dealt. Whenever a marked enemy dies, gain 2% critical hit damage, stacking up to 20 times or until combat ends. So you can technically get up to 40% more critical hit damage. That's kind of hard to pull off outside of PvE, but it works quite well in the dark zone, where you're pretty much always in combat. So essentially what you want to be doing is peppering a few guys in the back, waiting for those orange numbers to pop up, and then when they do, you want to be um, gunning down the guy that's kind of pushing you, and in theory, if they're all close together, you will kill them. The difference with PvP, if we just select that now, you'll notice that middle paragraph there in um, hostile negotiations, it needs to be within 15 metres. So if you mark three people and they are all away from each other by more than 15 metres, then it won't share the damage, and that's one of the fixes they made, and why a lot of people no longer play this. But in conflict, where it's usually a close-knit fight, that's absolutely fine because you're still going to essentially get that uh, hostile negotiations to work. And not only that, even the 1v1 capabilities of this build are really high because it has such high crit chance. You want to spec every piece similar to this, critical hit chance or critical hit damage like this. I decided to roll two blues on this build because I just feel that's a nice comfortable place to be on a, a DPS set. But honestly, you should run this with six red or at least this, it works really well with six, five and four red. I don't, I don't think you should go any higher than that though because the whole point of it is to damage people from range where you're not too sort of at risk of dying anyway. So six reds, five reds, four reds, that's all fine. Luckily, the knees and the holster, as you can see, both dropped very well roll critical hit damage on them already. So I just re-rolled those to blue. Backpack is a necessity because it gives you 100% spread damage instead of just 60%. Just bear in mind that is only your critical hits. Yes, this does work off of enemy skills, shields, as long as they're not immune, decoys, drones, hives. As long as they're within 15 meters and you've already marked them, if you gun down their hive, there's a very high chance you'll kill the person um, that's already marked. I'm running a Fenris chess piece here because I think ARs are by far the best to use, but you definitely want an SMG or possibly even a shotgun as your secondary. Um, you need high rate of fire weapons, absolutely, because the more critical hits you can output in, in the tiny window that you might see somebody before they get into cover, um, that's obviously incredibly important. You need to be able to get them marked quickly, and if you've got a low rate of fire weapon such as the Foul, which is my favourite AR, it just doesn't work as well on this build. Even though the critical hits hit harder, you just need to get as many applied as possible in, in the limited time frame that you might have in a fight. So FAMAS is probably top choice, Eagle Bearer, Police M4, um, a very close choice as well is the Carbine. I hardly ever use this and I think it's one of the best ARs in the game because it's so precise and accurate, it has one of the best handling stats of any ARs. As long as you've got damage to targets out of cover or critical hit damage, it'll work well with this build. So the Fenris chess piece is also roll critical hit chance and damage and you definitely don't want to run the Negotiator's chess piece here because it's pretty much useless. Um, I've put Unbreakable on here just in case somebody does rush me. I've got that little get out of jail free card. And ultimately, the longer that I'm alive, the more that I'm firing and therefore the more damage that I'm going to spread. So for me, Unbreakable was an obvious choice. But if any of you have a better version of this build, please do let me know. And if I prefer your version, I will credit you in the, the sort of updated Negotiators build video that I might release. Um, so just let me know your thoughts on the build. I originally had a Coyotes here, but I went with Seska because I just felt it was more important to always be as close to 60% as possible without having to worry about the range. You know, Coyotes, if they get up close, you don't get the 10%. Um, whilst it is a very, very good choice here, I just wanted to go with the Seska. And this mask is a bit too well rolled for me not to use on a crit chance build. Um, <clears throat> so, if I have a quick look at my stats here, this is what you want to be aiming for. As close to 60% as possible on your crit chance, 58 is fine, and then just spec everything else into crit damage. Obviously my watch and my well rolled gear are helping get this as high as it is, and you can't really get a huge amount higher than this, maybe like 185 would be where it starts to cap out, at least on an AR. Um, but SMGs you can get that higher as well, and if you, if we switch to my secondary, my Dark Winter, I've actually got 176 crit damage with the 60% chance, so that was really nice as well. 
So yeah, I just thought I'd dust off the carbine. Um, you know, FAMAS is great, but I, I, something about the carbine that I really like, and I wanted an opportunity to use it in a build. So um, most of my other builds, I use the FAL because I just think it's literally the best AR in the game. I think it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, you know, you need a high rate of fire weapons, so this was my choice here. I decided to go with Firewall for my specialization for a few different reasons. One is the fact that you get a double damage critical hit chance mod from Firewall for the long underbarrel rail. So it's 10% instead of 5. That's obviously going to help this build. Two, we get a very effective shield. Um, if you ever get a sort of bum rushed by an intimidated uh, adrenaline rush user you need to be able to burst them down quickly while staying alive so we've got the unbreakable to help a bit with that the shield is going to give us an additional 11 percent damage to anybody within 10 meters and then firewall on top of that actually gives us 10 percent damage to enemies that are within 10 meters and that applies to the whole team so that's 21 percent extra damage if somebody rushes me which i felt was really useful that in conjunction with the extra critical hit damage mod and the very impressive armor kit that you get from Firewall, I just felt it was the smartest choice because I like with all my builds to reduce the weaknesses as much as possible first and then my second priority is to enhance the strengths. The strengths of this build are critical hit damage, so I've, I've done that as high as possible and I've chosen killer. Uh, and the weaknesses are it's 1v1 capabilities. Yes, it is good but because you're going to run this as a high red build, you need to have that burst damage and that's where Firewall is really strong for close range encounters. Because at long range encounters, you're probably not going to die. You can get into cover or you get out of uh, get out of danger a bit easier than up close. The reason I chose killer here is because when you kill an enemy with a critical hit, which is quite easy with this build, gives you 40% critical hit damage for 10 seconds. So that's going to apply to the other people that you've marked. Um, this also works off of skills as well. If you kill a skill with a critical hit, again, um, you know there's at least a 50-60% chance I'm going to be doing that. Is in sync and Optimus better for this build, or are, sorry? Yes, I think they are, but I use those all the time, and I wanted to try something a little bit different, and I was kind of inspired by the Dark Winter, because this has perfect killer. So I'm going to switch this to my close-range encounters, uh, and then anybody that's marked is going to take a lot of damage if somebody rushes me, and I'm, I'm sort of spraying down massive crit damage with this weapon. Um, I'm running the Booster Hive as well, because like all squishy DPS builds that I run, the Booster Hive is a great way to counter Eclipses. If you don't know, regardless of the skill tier of a booster, it always cleanses all status effects as soon as that drone hits you. Um, the skill tier only buffs the um, the 5 second window that you get, where you get a bit of hazard resistance and a bit of um, handling as well, 20% from base. So, you know, that's nice, but the whole point of that is just to cleanse status effects. So yeah, what, the way I'm going to try and play this build, I'm not going to be too close up front. I want to be sat a little bit far back, probably with at least one team member in front of me. I'm going to, if I see guys right in the background, I'm going to be shooting those first with just a couple of shots until I see those orange numbers, which is the critical hit. I'll then be um, completely prioritizing the guy that's essentially closest and thereby therefore the biggest threat. Because by gunning him down, as long as his teammates are within 50 meters, they're going to die. It's 100% it's going to kill them. If I then get killer proc'd off of that guy that I've killed, um, any future marked enemies will be taking so much damage um, and then I can just shoot their skills down or whatever and absolutely melt them. So I quite like how I put this build together but I'm sure there are better versions out there, just please do let me know. Thank you all for the continued support of the channel by the way, I do really appreciate um, you know all of the likes and subscribes and the comments that I get so thank you time and time again for that. Um, you know, it, It's been a lot more popular than I expected so that's that's awesome news. Right, let's see how we get on. I probably should have looked at what my team are running and what, what my opposition are running, but it just bugs out so much in conflict. Unless I know it's going to be a super sweaty game, I tend not to do it. I just get stuck on people's loadouts. We do have a couple of high armor-ish builds here. So that top guy on, on the um, on my team bottom right there, he seems to be quite harmless. So I'm probably going to try and play as behind him as possible. Oh, okay. That is once all three of them leave the spawn. <laughs> ah, it's always a bad shot to get stuck in the spawn. You always want to try and choose your loadout before you load in because if they get to the middle first, which is what they already have, um, it makes it a lot more difficult. Let's get that booster hive straight out because that was a dirty hit there. They got us instantly cleanse that fire. That. So now I'm going to kill the guy that's down. Shoot this guy as well. The mech cut off. Still marked up. He's taken a lot of damage. 
No. I've got eight seconds to my shield, so I just need to kite this guy a little bit. Haha, <laughs> bamboozled him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, got the kill. Got the kill. Nice. Didn't think I'd get away with that. I'm going to sit and cover now. I'm not going to use a medkit here because I don't have one. Let's just see what we're on at the moment. Three kills already. Okay, and pretty high damage there. Someone's just left our team, which kind of sucks, but never mind. Definitely pushing left side here. Yeah, I'm coming with you, buddy. Who's taking damage? Oh, it's this guy. Oh, he's up against the status, dude. Don't sit in range of it, buddy. Oh, no, no. I've got to throw that out. Boost. Oh, he's just passed it on to me. Really? Let's get inside my bleed. Boost online. Oh, come on, man. Enough with the skills. Nice, switch to the Dark Winter. I probably should have started with the Dark Winter as I was that close. Fortunately, because I've no medkits here, I've got to stay out of cover. Or in cover, sorry. Oh, we didn't get the critical hit on him. I was hoping to get one critical hit so I could shoot his skill. Nice, stay out of the way of that. I really should be pushing this fight, but I need to help my team here. Oh, my health just come back, perfect. So because I downed that guy and I got a crit on him, I was actually able to close the kill instantly there. Nice try, buddy. See, I like its 1v1 capabilities. You know, it absolutely melts. Where's my shield? Where's my shield? Oh. Okay, I really don't want to use this last med kit here, so I'm just going to hold on to this, stay out of cover. Uh, in cover. So why do I keep getting that wrong? Stay in cover and out of a fight. There we go. So yeah, that sort of play there is generally how you want to do it. If you've got two people, whoops. I can still get this kill. Yes, teammates have my back. Okay, now I'm going to use the medkit. Get the hive. And rush this guy. I've got the boost of you boys, I've got the boost of you. Oh buddy, don't die. Don't die, buddy. No. Yes. Well played, team. And that is why you turn off that one. Oh, I should get a good second guy. Now they go, so you die just there. Boost the hive out. Let's get the booster back up and continue on our way. Throw the booster back for this guy. Oh, he went the wrong way. Don't you dare die and kill us all, buddy. Oh, that was terrible shooting, but I've got a killer prox now. You know you've got a prox if you look at the side of your gun, you can see the little knife there. Oh, I just closed the kill. See what I'm saying about the carbine? This thing is an absolute laser. It's phenomenally good. Victory really big fan of the carbine. I mean, the FAMAS and the Police M4 are probably better, but if you... I don't know if anybody does what I do, but I like to test the recall patterns. And, you know, sometimes you just use an AR and you'll like it, and you don't know why. You know it's not the best in class, but you just like it. And that usually comes down to the recall pattern. It just plays... Um, more comfortably into what you like. A good example of this is in, if any of you ever played Destiny 1, I was such a fanboy of the AS Luna um, because I loved its um, sort of diagonal kick. I just got so used to it. And even though other hand cannons kicked more vertical, I just couldn't get on with them. It was weird. So sometimes you find an AR that you just like the recall pattern or the bloom. Um, I think the carbine kit is for more people than less because it doesn't really have that much bloom and its vertical is very, its recall, sorry, is very vertical and stable. 
um, and, and therefore you're going to land more shots at range. And I think that's why the carbine is one of the, the top tier weapons in the game. Um, but yeah, try it whichever one you want. Just use what you're comfortable with. The most important thing is that high rate of fire. We managed to fill that, finish that game on 13 kills, 0 deaths and 3 assists with 37 million damage, which is pretty high. So I'm happy with that. And a lot of that just came down to getting kills for people that had already run away um, or just killing two people at the same time. So hopefully that game showcased that you know running negotiators and PvP at the moment is viable. I truly think it is. It's an amazing set. Um, let me know what you think. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Until then, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.